When these symptoms first appeared, I was actually very heavily into CrossFit and uh, training for a competition called the Big Team Battle. Uh, I simply went to bed one night feeling fine, woke up the next morning and couldn't see. Uh, long story short is after 14 months of seeing many, many doctors, many, many specialists, finally making my way down to Brigham and Women's Hospital, I was diagnosed with NMO. Uh, you know, it's been eight months now since I was diagnosed with NMO. Um, <laughs> Since that time, I have been through every single emotion imaginable at least four or five times. You know, from sadness to anger to why is this happening to me? Uh, and there's many, many people out there that I'm sure feel the same way. Um, but now everything's come full circle. Uh, I'm now back at CrossFit. I'm training. I'm once again training for the big team battle uh, that I didn't get to do two years ago. Granted, I'm not the athlete I once was, but I'm, I'm in the gym and I'm doing what I need to do. Uh, I'm enjoying myself. Um, and you know, the one thing that I can take away from living with NMO is, if you see me walking down the street, I look just as normal as anybody else. Uh, but inside, there's something going on that nobody, nobody knows about, nobody can see. Uh, so, you know, when I look at another person now, having lived with this disease, I'm like, you know, I, you don't know what's going on in somebody's life. You don't know what's going on inside their bodies. So, you know, just, it's, it's hard to imagine what it's like to live with this. And I don't know how many patients are here tonight, but, um, it's something we just have to live with. Um, the one thing it's done is it's really told me what are, what's important. I used to think so many things were important. Everything was important. Every little tiny thing in my life was important. Now I realize, you know, all that stuff really doesn't matter. The stuff that's really important to me are the people that's close to me, my wife who I definitely wouldn't be standing here today without her. She's over there hiding in the corner in the green dress. Uh, you know, I feel very blessed by the people I have in my life. Um, and the one great thing about the Samira Foundation is now I have an opportunity to reach out to other people and help them. And hopefully they don't have to take this 14 month road to find out what their diagnosis is going to be. Maybe we can do it a little bit quicker. Um, you know, I first met Samira at last year's NMO Awareness Day at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And uh, we only spoke briefly, but she had made a lasting impression on me. I realized that I could take the worst news I'd ever gotten in my entire life and turn it into something positive by trying to help others. And you know, I really feel like I've taken that and run with it. Uh, as he stated, I'm the ambassador for the state of Maine. Um, and I'm very, very, feel very privileged to be able to do that. And, you know, in closing, I'd like to say, I've read all of the stories that Samira mentioned earlier for the, the NMO stories. And there's really, there's really two things that stand out to me in those stories. All of them, every single story has the same two things to it. One is, it's very hard to find a diagnosis, as she alluded to, uh, because there's so little known about this disease. 
Um, and, and if you read their stories, you'll see a lot of those people went through the same long process of seeing doctor after doctor after doctor and finally getting a diagnosis. If you're fortunate enough to live in some place like Boston, maybe you get that diagnosis a little bit sooner. Um, and the other thing that really, really stood out to me uh, is every single person has a never give up attitude. Every single story is the same. And that's really all I have to say about it.